Okay, so you might recall that a while ago I made a gravity simulation. This one is in p5.js. I'll link a video over there um, about the video I made, but that one was in processing Java version. So this week's video is going to be quite a short one. I'm going to be trying to remake this, but in Scratch, which may or may not be a good idea. So as you may know, Scratch is a block programming language that a lot of uh, new programmers use to learn about programming. So I haven't touched Scratch in literal years, so I'm making a new account to do all this, try this new stuff, because my old account contains all the projects I made in elementary school, and I want to keep that sort of pristine. If you want to check out my old account, by the way, it's called s-fangw, and it has some pretty cool projects on it. I made a video where I played some of my old games, you can find it linked over there in the corner somewhere. So I guess my last message here is, sorry I've officially quit Scratch, well I guess I'm back, it's a surprise comeback. Okay, so to make a gravity simulation, you need a couple of things. You need some particles, and you need the particles to move around. I explained this briefly in my gravity simulation video, but the idea is that you have a bunch of point masses. They, they can also be like not point masses, but we're gonna pretend they're point masses for the sake of this simulation. Basically, you have a bunch of points, and every point attracts every other point through the force of gravity. The force of gravity is equal to g, which is some universal constant, times m1 times m2 over r squared, where m1 is the mass of the first object, m2 is the mass of the second object, and r, r is the distance between the two. So you sort of have like a collection of n objects or n points, and every point attracts every other point according to this rule. And just as a reminder, you can check out that video where I explain the details of a gravity simulation and all kind of the rules behind that in my other video. Okay, so I kind of forgot how this works, so this is going to be kind of a journey. You're going to be uh, doing this along with me. Okay, so I remember that the first thing you do is when the green flag is clicked, some stuff happens. Um, I'm not going to be doing this in a very scratchy way. I'm going to be using pen because that's kind of what I'm more familiar with now. Okay, so we're going to need some kind of variables here. I think it would be nice to have a list here uh, called x's, um, as well as a list called y's. I don't know why there's this little awkward space in front of it, probably like a min width thing. Also, part of the goal of this is going to be seeing how fast Scratch can actually run. I am tempted to say that Scratch uses one based indexing, which really annoys me, but it kind of makes sense if you're just starting out programming. Okay, so I guess the first thing we're going to need to do is make a bunch of points. Man, declaring variables is so difficult because you like need to make a manual variable for every single one you want. Okay, so now we have two lists with 50 elements and we want to make sure we keep drawing these. Oh wow, there is currently no way to do like a for thing and a thing thing. By that I mean there's no way to do a for loop. Honestly, this video is just going to turn into non-experienced scratch user becomes mad at scratch. I do appreciate how it has these angle bracket things because that kind of differentiates type. So like this angle shape um, denotes a boolean. Okay, let's make like a function. Let's call it draw points. Okay, I think this loop should work. So if we try to do draw points forever, I hope there's a little delay in here. Um, it's probably like 60 frames per second or something. Okay, so now we have some points that are displaying and that's good. And now we need them to attract each other according to the laws of gravity. Okay, so it took me a long time to build that, but now we have a distance squared function which calculates the square distance between any two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. I guess we're also gonna want a thing that updates the positions. One thing I do appreciate about Scratch is how it allows you to lay out your code visually. So you have two dimensions to put stuff instead of the usual one dimension. Okay, so now we have this function that updates the position of every single um, point. So hopefully this should work if we just plug it in here. Okay, and now the final thing we need to do is just update some of the velocities, i.e. do accelerations. So let's do update velocities. Uh, and here we're going to need a nested for loop, which is terrible, and it's going to make it go pretty slowly. Of course, there are ways to optimize this with, for example, quadtrees, which I discussed in my Gravity Sim quadtree video, which you can check out in the description below. Maybe in a card, if I can put two cards of the same video, it'll appear up there, but if not, check the description below for that video. Anyways, we're going to need a nested for loop, which really sucks. So, for every single point, we're going to look at every other point, and let's make a new block just to make sure our code isn't extremely cluttered and let's call it update vel of i and j um, and this is just going to update points i based on the gravitational attraction of point j recall um, this thing we have point i point j it's going to update the velocity of point i according to whatever pull uh, point j is exerting on it 
Okay, and I think this thing should be done. We might have to tweak some of the constants over here, but I think update vel should be a thing now. Um, so let's update the velocities, update the positions, and see where that gets us. Oh, hey! Okay, we got some stuff going. That's, that's really cool. I think we should make it so that particles can't bounce past the edge. Okay, and doing like 50 squared operations, it's still pretty good per frame. Like, this is pretty smooth animation, and I'm kind of surprised by that, honestly. So we're gonna have to make sure that every particle's x-coordinate is no larger than uh, 240. I'm gonna make sure that every element's uh, y value is no greater than 170. Okay, so now everything should be staying within bounds. Nothing should ever be going off screen. And also if anything ever hits the screen, uh, it loses all of the energy in that direction. Let's make a, you know, 100 particles and see how it fares. In particular, it should be about four times as laggy. So you probably don't wanna use this for your next universe simulation. Okay, but like 50 held up pretty well. There's probably ways to optimize this to run in Scratch. Okay, 20 runs actually extremely well. Okay, uh, let's make a new list called Mass. Okay, cool, that looks really cool. We have some big and some smaller objects, but currently they're all the same mass. Uh, so let's, let's change the color of these things. Uh, I think 50 gives a nice pastel uh, feel. Okay, at this point, probably wanna set you know, because area should be proportional to mass. So we want to set the pen size to actually the square roots of uh, the mass. Uh, and now we have some like very good mass things. When we do the gravity update, we should reference item J of mass. So now the bigger things should attract more than the smaller things. And it's also make the coefficient of gravity slightly smaller. Uh, and then we have a bunch of big things that are moving less and some small things that are moving more. That's a gravity simulation, I guess. I managed to code this in, you know, about an hour, so that's not too bad for me trying Scratch for the first time again in a year. Uh, let's amp this up back to 50. You know, this runs decently well, on turbo mode at least, and you can kind of see how there are clusters of things forming, which is kind of what you want with a gravity simulation. Things are also throwing each other uh, with the slingshot effect all the time, but we can deal with that. In a future video, it'd be really interesting to see if I could implement the uh, collision stuff that I had talked about in my early video from, I think, fall or summer of 2021 or 2020. But it'd be interesting to see if, you know, you could make sort of a ball pit thing in Scratch, because usually I think a Scratch is very limiting, but you know, this gravity project shows that there are actually a lot of things you can do with it. So I know I dissed on Scratch a lot in this video, but I find it incredibly impressive how you can sort of make a block programming language in the browser for, you know, people who are learning programming or experts, you know, to work with. You're kind of like running uh, an IDE in the browser with your own language. Um, and it's a block programming language, which makes it all the more interesting. So yeah, I think that'll be it for this video. This was a very interesting challenge to implement this gravity simulator. And I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, fumble around with Scratch for the first time again in years. So if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave that down below. Check out the description for links to all of my past videos, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.